Hello, my name is Perry Gunderman, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the Epicor's favorite setup and configuration. Now, this may be a bit different of a home screen than you're used to, and what I've done here is I've removed all of the main links and menus to give us a completely blank home screen to start with. In order to begin customizing, I'm going to right-click anywhere in the home screen and go into my settings. Now, it's important to note that you can only do this favorite setup and configuration I'm presenting in the Metro style. This cannot be done in the classic menus, as that is done differently. In order to go to my settings, I go to the lower right corner here and click Add Tile. I'm presented with a dialog. Since I have no existing tiles, I only have the option to create a new tile group right now, which I will do. I will name this one Nothing right now. We're going to recreate the recent tabs first. And as many of you may know, when opening up Epicor, the recents does not have a group header. So I click Next, and I select which of these I want to add. A link, BAQ gadget, favorite list, general, or Epicor social. I know that the recent items are part of the general, but it's good to usually explore these areas and see what you need. From here, I will leave it on the recent forms list, which will list my recently viewed forms in Epicor. Now I can select what size I want that to be, and whether or not I want to be able to expand the tile. I'll leave it able to be expanded with this checkbox up here, and I'll also leave the default settings of two width and one height, where I can expand it to two height and two width. It's important to go through as much of this menu as possible, as there is a glitch within Epicor that if you click the Save button before going all the way through the menus, that it will have the old menu overlay on the new menu, which will require you closing Epicor and then reopening it in order to reset it. You can also change the color of the tiles to whatever you desire. I'm going to use this one with purple. When I'm done, I'm going to click the Save button down here, and we will see recent forms appear. If I click this in the lower of the right hand corner, we can see that it shrinks because by default it opened in the expanded size. This is one square high by two square wide. Next, I'm going to create the favorites menu that you see within Epicor when you open it. In order to do this, right click, go down to the tile group, and this time I'm going to create a new tile group and give it a title. I continue to navigate through. Select my favorites list, select next, and I give it a title for that particular favorites group. Now I can have multiple groups, but I'm just going to use one for now. For the default of this tile, since I'll have multiple favorites within it, let's go with a 3x3. Three three. And I don't want to be able to expand it. Here we have the blank favorites. Now I can right click on this go into settings, and make any changes that I need to, including the title, which we see in the lower left-hand corner, or the size. I can also change the color. In order to add forms to it, I will have to go into the menu. We will do that in a few moments. We are now going to add access to the main menu, which includes the tree view of Epicor. In order to do this, we're going to add another tile group. We're going to create another new one, and I'm going to name it Epicor. For this, I'm going to go to the general list, I'm going to select menu, and I will leave it as the default settings. Now if I click on this, you can see the tree view that we would normally see. If you right click on an item, you'll see in the lower right hand corner here, we can add it to the home, and we can add it to our favorites. By clicking add to favorites, we can select what company context, in this case I will stick with the default of Epicor Education, and what item this will belong to. I want to leave this in my favorites group, so I will click save. Now if we click the home button, we can see it right here. I can continue to add as many favorites as I want to my favorite group. This allows employees to select what items they might just work with in a given day, as opposed to having as many forms as possible and having to go to additional screens. We also want to add our settings in, so we'll right click, go here, but this time we're going to use the existing Epicor. We'll go to General, and unlike the other ones, Settings is actually given the title of Title, which is a bit odd, but that is what contains the settings. We'll leave this with its default settings, and here we see. We can click on it, and we're at the Settings screen. We will also add Help. Once again, click in the area, click 
to the add. And now we have help available on the main screen. Since I have Epicor Social configured on my machine, I want to be able to see messages that people post. I can do that by adding it to the home menu. I'm going to create a new tile group called Social. And just simply select the Epicor Social down here. I can also select how often I want it to refresh. I'll make this refresh every 30 minutes. And to get attention, I'll change it to the red color. Again, I can click the size and select what I want. I might go ahead and expand this one, but leave it as 1, 1 by the default. Allow it to expand up to 5, 3. It's going to log into here, and if I have it configured, I could see messages pop up, and when I'm interested in checking it, I can just expand it to the maximum size and see what information has been added. Now I'm going to add the ability to quick launch an application, open a file, or go to the web. I will right click, new, and let's begin with web. In order to add a link to the internet or program, we select the link group. We click next, and we select what try and do this. We could add an Epicor form, like we did with the favorites over on our left, which allows us to directly connect to an Epicor form. We can also go with a URL. What URL would I like to navigate to? Well, let's go to google.com. Should we give the link a title? Yeah, let's call it Google. I can select what I want to be the default. I can put an image in, maybe the Google logo, a URL snapshot, which is just a screenshot from the website, or I can go with the default for the link type, which will be the home page of Google. I'm going to change the settings to be 3 by 3 so we have a good view of the home page. As you can see here, this isn't exactly the Google home page, so let's go in and change the settings on it. We'll right click on the bar here, go into settings. This time on the link title, we'll go ahead and go for URL snapshot. We'll get it from google.com, and we'll say that we'll refresh it every 30 minutes. I'll leave it as a size of 1 4 and click Save. Here we see the Google homepage. We can put in UPS tracking. This will allow us to search the web as though we had a web browser open inside of Epicor. This is useful, but what if I want to go ahead and go automatically to the UPS tracker instead of going through Google first? Well, let's go ahead and change this again. Go to settings, change google.com to the UPS tracker website, and we'll change it to shipment tracker. We'll have to change the URL to display but we'll leave the refresh timer the same. Once we save it, we will now automatically start on the UPS tracker. Here, we could put in our tracking number and load up whatever shipments we have out. Now, let's look at adding a document or application that can be opened within the Epicor home screen. For that, we'll right click and create a new tile group. Here, we're going to select Program, Folder, or Document. Now we need to select an application that we want to connect to. Let's name this Adobe Reader. As you can see, when I clicked on the item added to the home screen, it automatically opened up the Adobe Reader application using the shortcut I have on my desktop. You can also link this directly to the program executable or to any shortcut on your computer in order to launch an application without ever having to leave your Epicor screen. Finally, let's add a BAQ. We're going to right click, select new, and we'll name this parts. 
here, we will select a BAQ gadget. And then we need to look for a business activity query to use. For this presentation, I created one, so I'll bring that up so we can use it quickly. We want to be able to periodically refresh the BAQ. So I'll click that button. That's like how frequently I want to refresh. I really only want to refresh every 30 minutes. Now I can select what columns I would like to display. I'm going to display the company, the part, the description, and the unit of measure. Now I can select how I want Epicor to handle when items are clicked, either on the line directly or within the tab itself. So here we can set what happens when the tile is clicked. For this, let's go ahead and open up the part form. I'll select Epicor form, click on the drop down, and then I'll type in part. You can select any form. However, when a user clicks an individual line, I want to give them a little reminder of what a unit of measure is. So I'll put in a Wikipedia link to the unit of measure. Go next. Select how big I want the BAQ to be. In this case, since I want to see a lot of information, let's make it as wide and large as possible. After clicking Save, it may take a minute to bring up your BAQ. As you can see here, I have a listing of all the companies, parts, descriptions, and unit of measures. So I'll click on one of them. As you can see here, it brings me to the Wikipedia page for units of measure. If I click on the bar down here, however, we see that the part maintenance will open. Now, what if I want to bring up the part maintenance with the line itself? Well, let's go ahead and close this. Right click on parts, go to settings, and then we'll go to the screen where we can set what happens when a line is clicked. Here, instead of opening up the URL, we'll change it to an Epicor form. We'll select the part form. This may vary for different BAQs and different forms, but I know that part will allow me to pull up information directly. Save. So as we can see here, when we click the 00C1, Not only does Epicor open up the part entry form, it also pulls up the part number that we specified. As you can probably see from this video, Epicor had the idea of their new Metro style to allow you to access many elements of Epicor without ever having to leave the home screen. Not only Epicor, but items outside of Epicor, like viewing PDFs or documents, being able to surf the web for different items related to work, or even communicate with employees inside the company through Epicor Social. It's a powerful tool and can actually be very handy when configured properly. So go look around, see what applications you need to be connecting to Epicor, and make your day a bit easier. Thank you very much. Have a good day.